Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. In my last video, I put together a little mitered box with a clear acrylic lid, and I didn't really have any real need for it. I wanted to test a couple things out. Well, first off, I wanted to see if I could uh, make a mitered box with you know nice crisp corners and have it you know turn at least reasonably nice. And I think it did that. I think it looks pretty good. And the other reason for making it is I wanted to test out splines. I mean, splines look nice. I mean, I like the look of them. But do they actually add anything to uh, the actual build itself? And I figured I want to you know, test that out. Because most of my builds, as you may have noticed if you've watched uh, a lot of the videos on my channel, they're mostly practical. Things that I can you know, either use for work or um, organization in the shop, all those sorts of things. And I don't necessarily you know, build anything that has to you know, look nice. It's you know kind of nice when it turns out that they do look nice, but uh, that's not my initial purpose. I want them to be uh, functional, and I want them uh, to last because I don't like you know, having to remake things uh, simply because it can't stand up to whatever kind of torture I'm going to put it through. So that said, like I said, I don't really have any use for you know a nice miter joint uh, box. I find the dowels are really quite good, and uh, also the rabbit joints also work really quite well. So this is, um, first off, I'm going to test to see if this is going to make any difference as far as strength goes, because that's kind of important, because, like I said, I want things to last. But the other thing is, uh, is it more difficult to put together? I mean, that is uh, paramount as well, because I don't like wasting a bunch of time uh, doing a whole bunch of extra work for something and well, it doesn't actually turn out to be necessary. It's just, you know, maybe slightly prettier or marginally stronger. Uh, anyway, those sorts of things I, you know, don't matter if it takes forever to put it together. So what I'm going to do here, as I've been rambling on, is I'm going to take some scrap wood I have and I'm going to make a little jig so that I can add splines to that box, or at least that was my initial intent. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a couple of, uh, well, miter joints. And I'm going to test them out like I did uh, in previous videos to see if any of them are any more strong than the others. And the funny thing is, is, I was putting this together and I was making it. It doesn't take long to make. I mean, uh, it's a simple jig and it's uh, really quite straightforward. I'm just uh, making a frame so that it can stick, uh, I can clamp it to my crosscut sled and I'm going to have a V there and that V is going to hold whatever project I want to put a spline on. I mean, it took maybe, uh, well, a little over an hour, I suppose, uh, which is nothing, so that's fine. And of course, once the, sp the spline jig and the miter jig are all together, I think I could probably put together uh, a miter box in probably, uh, well, maybe an hour and a half. So it's not so bad. And it takes obviously less time to use dowels. Uh, and I'm getting really good at doing rabbit joints, so I don't find that that takes very long either. But if it ever comes up that I need to have a box that really looks nice uh, without any you know edges that you can see, like I see in the plywood there, uh, at least this will be an option. But anyway, as I was doing this, something occurred to me. I was about at, I think, about this point in the build. And that is, in the box I made, there is a rabbit, no, not a jabber, sorry, there's a groove at the bottom uh, that fits the bottom piece. The bottom feet, uh, piece fits in and is glued, and it's glued to all the sides. And as I formed the box, it uh, was glued in place. And I realized that in that box, uh, specifically, and any other future box I make with that recessed bottom, that is going to be a very strong joint. And is it really going to be necessary to add splines to it to make it stronger? And I figured, well, I'm already halfway through this, so what I'm going to do is finish it, of course, and I'm uh, going to go through the whole process. In the end, you're going to see uh, whether or not that was actually worth all this effort. Well, not, not much effort. <laughs> I've, if you've watched, like I said, my channel any length of time, I just like tinkering with things sometimes and testing stuff out and, you know, seeing what works and then putting it through its paces if I it's an actual, you know, practical item like my toolbox and stuff like that. Uh, but most of the time it's just, you know, building something to see, you know, how it works. And that's what this uh, project probably is going to turn out to be. 
So I'm going to, as you can see here, this is the frame that's going to fit on uh, the fence, and it's just going to be a couple screws here. I'll just show you the one, and it's going to be nice and snug. And then I am going to, as you saw, I used my uh, long strip cutter. I didn't really need to, but I wanted to make sure it was quite accurate to make these two pieces. And I'm going to put a couple screws in here to keep that nice and snug. And then all that's left to do, of course, is to take this V and uh, attach it to that frame. And there you go. That's it. That's a very straightforward build. I didn't want to get into anything fancy because... Uh, well, first off, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to ever use this again, uh, so I don't want to waste you know too much time on this. There you go, that's done. I uh, just have to put it up um, on its framework like this, and this is the only part of this that took any length of time. I wanted to make sure that both sides are going to be even. I know it's not really that important if you're off by a degree or two. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to be able to visually see that. Uh, but I wanted to, you know, keep it looking as nice as possible because, I mean, it doesn't take too much more effort to actually do this part of it. So I got this on here. I fiddled with it for quite some time. I got my angle block out, which, by the way, uh, for 45 degrees doesn't register as 45 degrees. <laughs> it registers as 43 point something. And the only reason why, I mean, when I originally first got this thing, I said, well, that's really ridiculous because it should be 45. Is there must be something uh, wrong with what I'm doing. But as you can see here in a second, I'll take this off here and I'll put it on this, which is actually a 45. And it measures, I think it was 43.7. Uh, obviously, the decimal point for these things are not that accurate. Uh, but as you can see, once it's in place, well, so there we go. And yeah. It's more than accurate enough, especially for something like this, because, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, a fraction of a degree, you're not going to visually be able to see that. So there you go. It's all set up now. And I'm going to make sure it's clamped properly in place. And then I'm going to use the, as you see, I'm using the set square because I, I can't see the back side of where I need to drill a hole. So that's my guide to where the center for uh, that V is. And I'll put a screw in there and then a couple more screws and yeah this is it uh, it's pretty much done so all that rambling off camera what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to use the uh, miter jig i made uh, cut up a bunch of poplar and i glued them together and here they are this is the one that's pretty much the same as a box uh, obviously just doing two sides that's going to be the control and this one here i'm going to add splines to and we'll see if it, uh, well, if it does anything at all besides, you know, look pretty. So I'm going to set this all up. It doesn't take long at all. I mean, it's just a simple matter of setting the height of the blade. And that takes a few seconds. And then all I need to do is decide how, uh, how deep to make the spline, like how far in. Uh, this is just a test piece. Uh, so I did make, uh, well, it's not really that, uh, well, you're going to see that the splines are actually a bit close to the edge. Uh, again, it didn't really matter. I just want, like I said, test this out. So I'm going to run this through here, flip it over, run it through again. And then I'm going to readjust the uh, distance so I can fit in the pieces I cut, which I won't be showing you all either because I just used, again, my thin uh, strip cutting jig and uh, I uh, cut a couple strips so that they're not too snug but enough room for glue. And then I'm just going to glue these up. There's a few others. As you know, what I do for when I'm cutting things to any tolerance, I usually start either a bit big or a bit small. Uh, in this case, I had to do a bit small uh, and then work my way up to it because you can't recut these things. It's no way of holding them. So there you go. I'm just going to glue these on. And then off camera, I'm going to, after they set, I'm going to uh, flush cut them. And one, I'm going to sand down a little bit because I want to see what it looks like. And I'm going to, as you can see, put a little bit of oil on it. Because, in all honesty, I mean, I like the look of them. I mean, it, it looks nice. And, and that's fine, I suppose, if that's what you're after. Uh, again, like I said, practicality. So what I'm going to do here is that corner you see, I need to trim that off. As you can see, it's flat now. And again, this is just an anecdotal thing. But I am going to use this clamp to... 
and put some pressure on this. And I'm always impressed by how strong my detergent. I'm not really, you know, putting any great effort into this, but it is a it's a good joint for considering the fact that there's a lot of pressure on uh, one little tiny bit of glue. So this is the one that matters. And I'm gonna clamp this down, and it is harder to do. It is, you know, like I said, a nice strong joint. And it's gonna give here in a second. You see the wood bending? There you go. And as you can see, the wood itself broke, not the actual joint, which is kind of cool. And then the one that really matters here, the reason why halfway through this I decided there's no real point in, you know, worrying about this for strength. This is the box, actually, the well, two corners of it, and you see it just crushes the wood. There's no damage whatsoever to the joint itself. The actual wood here gave free, uh, it's, it's, it just fell apart, and the joint is, like I said, completely solid. But this is the miter joint, and you can see it didn't break where, you know, it, which you would think it would, and along the joint itself, it broke in the wood. And yeah, it does add strength, it does look nice. Uh, as you can see here, this is just the miter by itself, and a little blurry, sorry. Uh, again, it just broke on the wood, and it, it adds strength, okay, <laughs> that's what it could come down to, but none of them compare to the actual bottomed, uh, like the box here, because that's crushed, as you can see there, but the joint itself is still rock solid. Anyway, thanks for watching, leave comments, let me know what you think about all this, and I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.